And I realize she's not that poor. She's not a homeless person, okay? Uh, and, uh, and I realized she chose to be barefooted. She wasn't forced to. And this led me to thinking, okay? This is an episode I think from time to time. And it's actually, after a while, it made me un angry. Okay, and I start to think about Turkey and uh, myself, and also I think you can, uh, we can think this example in the terms of uh, Malang or Indonesia. Let me ask you the following question. If you choose, can you go out barefooted if you want to? Can you do it in Malang? Can you walk on the street barefooted? What, uh, how is the pavement? pavements? They are broken? maybe trash on the street, uh, pieces of uh, construction materials, sometimes glass, yeah. So this is what I mean by angry. I'm not angry at the girl, okay? It's actually, I am angry at uh, the municipality where I came from. In that case, I had lived eight years in Istanbul and or Cyprus. So, you know, uh, building pavement is not rocket science. We have the technology. You, you just basically pour concrete horizontally. It's easier than building this building, okay? We have the technology. So why don't we have the, uh, a pavement? So if a citizen wants to walk outside barefooted, they can do it. Uh, it's not that I want to, I like my shoes, you know, comfortable, but do we have the freedom to do it? And uh, the answer is actually no. We don't have the freedom to do it. And uh, uh, this subject, economic development, and uh, why it matters is actually became my uh, dissertation topic. I became a development economist. Uh, the thinking about this kind of issues, uh, why don't we have some, you know, that American girl probably never ever think these tr issues. Uh, for her, it's given, okay? She expect that the uh, pavements will be uh, main, uh, constructed and then maintained properly. That she can actually, if she want, she can walk on the pavement barefooted. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, this is like a very simple thing, but uh, like many examples of how life is, uh, how much we can improve our lives. And this is, as I said, the constructing pavements and keeping them clean is within our powers, okay? Our streets are dirty and pavements are, uh, either non-existent or poorly maintained. It's not something the, you know, the Americans or CIA impose us. You know, in politicians in Turkey, and I'm sure in Indonesia, whenever they cannot solve something, they blame CIA. You know, this is the evil Americans did it. No, not true. <laughs> Pavements, the, the Amer Americans are not throwing the trash, isn't it? It's us living in developing countries that throwing the trash in the cities that we live in. Uh, so uh, this is, I think, one of the things I really uh, liked about the cultural exchange is you never notice these things by watching the movie itself or reading the books. I mean, the reading, the, I, I read a lot of books and I think I'm a professor, so I fully support reading books. Don't make me wrong, but I think it's the, like living abroad is 90% what you learn when you study abroad is not in the books. It's maybe 80%, I'm not sure. Uh, is about these experiences that make you question what you take for granted. You know, uh, taking for granted is just you accept it as normal. As if it is normal that uh, our streets are dirty, you know. You know, in the, Olymp the World Cup is going on, and uh, everybody, or maybe you see it, that the Japanese uh, spectators, they clean the stadium 
after the game, okay? So, and the Qataris are surprised. Because Qataris, everything, all the manual labor is done by, including Indonesians, some South Asian workers, you know? They, uh, they don't do uh, manual labor. But the bigger point is like, uh, why J Japan is clean the streets? Because Japanese people, like, pay, uh, this is important to them. They pay attention and it is not only the uh, cleaning person's responsibility. It's uh, all the country's person responsibility. And that's, I think, how uh, they prioritize it and uh, they teach it in the school. And then they put in the funding. So municipality actually constructs uh, proper payments and then the people use it, uh, but also maintain it. Okay. So, uh, any questions so far? Anything you want to ask me? Okay. Because if you don't ask me any questions, I'm continuing with this academic presentation. It will be getting more boring. So, it's your opportunity to interrupt uh, uh, the lecture. Okay. Okay. Uh, little things I learned. When do you start the day in Indonesia, the business? When they open the shops, what time? Seven, some businesses, seven. Schools, what about schools? Seven, okay. What about in Turkey? What do you think? In Istanbul? Nine. Okay, let's think why. I just discovered it two days ago, so I'm very excited. I learned something new. Okay. Uh, so, when do you get up? Most of the country, what time do they get up? Five. For what? Praying. Okay. So you wake up for praying, the first prayer, and then uh, you, uh, soon you are wake up, you may as well have the breakfast, and then uh, you can start your day at six, and you can be at school at seven. So what is different in Turkey? <laughs> so you can do this every day of the year, why? I, uh, the every day, 365 days more or less, the first prayer is at five. Why? No. What determines the time of the first prayer? What, what determines the time of the first prayer? Sun is up. Yeah. What time the sun is up in Istanbul? 7.30 now. Yeah. What about summer? Five, four. Because it is in the north. You know, so Indonesia is in the uh, tropics, okay? So the all the year, the 12 hours, more or less, uh, sun is up, 12 hours dark. Never change. But not in the, if you are in the north. If you are in the north, in the winter days are short. So the sun is up at 7 a.m. and sun is down at 5 p.m. So maybe we have 7 to 17, 10 hours. And in the summer is the opposite, 14 hours. So, but the business has to start the same hour every day. So you cannot do this. Uh, so we don't arrange the day according to the sun is up and down in an urban setting. Of course, if you are a farmer, your days always start with when the sun is up, isn't it? But if you are in the city, uh, our days are reg cannot be regulated because the time of the first prayer is different during the year. It, it changes. So this is actually a very, very simple example, but I think a nice one about how geography affects culture, you know? Uh, I mean, uh, so we think of it as a small thing, but like um, it is uh, actually the start of the 
school day and the business day, it's a uh, different of two hours is not nothing. Huh? Uh, yes. So when I was like in the hotel, they said that very first day, like the, they, they made a schedule. When the breakfast room is very busy and not very busy, and it says like six to seven is very busy, and I'm like, what's happening? Why they are starting the breakfast at six? Never happens in Turkey, like crazy. Uh, yes. So, uh, and I guess people go to bed uh, earlier. So, like, now the, uh, uh, so, four hours time difference with Qatar, or three hours, isn't it? Three hours, three hours, is not a big difference, I thought, first. But actually, combining how the people daily life here, because you go to bed at when? 10, 9 and 10. So three more hours difference, it's 6 p.m. in Qatar, and that's only one game. Okay, if you want another, if you want to watch another game, you have to stay up very late, okay. Okay, so uh, if you have an opportunity, please uh, visit the rest of the world. If you have an opportunity to visit one week, visit for one week. If you have an opportunity to visit one semester, do a master. Uh, I will suggest it. Uh, not everybody is going to be a scholar. Some people are more inclined to business, some more inclined to uh, traveling, and uh, whatever is your uh, heart wants, do it. Okay? Uh, okay. So, let me, uh, if, since there are no questions, uh, get on with my presentation. Okay? Uh, so, I'm an economist, and the rest of the presentation will be much more uh, boring, but I try to make it as interesting as possible with, uh, 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 with as much as graphs and pictures possible. So, what I want to talk about is this issue of uh, the relationship with economic growth and the welfare. Okay? Economic growth is basically how much the a total economy is producing every year. Okay? So, a very rich country, does it automatically means that the welfare is increasing. Okay, welfare in, uh, I don't know, Indonesian, in Arabic, I think it is refah. So maybe in Indonesian you have the same word, refah. Okay, uh, when we say it, welfare in English, we, it includes material well-being, what you can buy, but it is more than that. Okay, and uh, pavement is an example that's something you cannot buy, but if the society has the resources, can provide to you, okay? Nobody can have nice private pavements for themselves, okay? You cannot have the streets for you, okay? This is an example where society has to come together, prioritize it, and build it. Okay, uh, so I'm going to show you uh, my diagnosis and my analysis of uh, the relationship between economic growth and welfare. Very basically, uh, if you want a high welfare society, you need economic growth, you need the material resources, okay? And then whether uh, the rest will follow depends on uh, social policy, okay, uh, other policies. But without a material base, uh, you cannot have very high welfare. Okay. Uh, a very simple way of putting this is money doesn't buy everything, okay? but it buys a lot. The money is not going to buy you friends, love. If you pay for love, it is not love. You know? uh, uh, but it can buy you a lot, you know, a roof over your head, some electricity, transportation, clothing, food. Uh, so what we are interested in economics, as an economist, we are really interested in uh, both economic growth and how the society uh, allocate these resources. Okay, so, uh, and uh, just a note, economists generally measure welfare 
by looking at health and education stats for the very simple reason that many other things are not easy to measure, but health and education is also indispensable uh, for uh, 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 welfare. So let's start with the material base, economic growth. The economists measure the economic growth at the very basic, what is called GDP, gross domestic product. So what is it basically? I'm not going to go into the, all the real life measurement problems, is economists try to uh, measure the total production in a country in a year, okay? How many new things we build, okay? And service is also a production, okay? So if you, somebody provide you a lecture, this is something new, okay? A service, it's a service, it's not a material good, but it is something new and somebody put an effort to provide it to you. So we try to count that too. How much, how well we do this counting is not your uh, problem, but if you do a master's in economics, it will be your problem, okay? So I'm showing you uh, select countries. One is at the very top. Uh, it's South Korea. Yeah, uh, at the very bottom is Vietnam, and uh, two in the middle, like uh, two snakes, uh, like uh, rolled each other, is Turkey and Malaysia. And then uh, Indonesia is uh, uh, the fourth one from the top, or second one from the bottom. So what this tells us, it starts. The graph starts in 1950, as you can see. Uh, Indonesian data starts later because Indonesia wasn't independent in 1950, okay? Uh, this measurement is done by statistical institutes and uh, it's generally, uh, government is not there, they don't have a statistical institute. So, and Vietnam's data starts in 1970 because there was all this Vietnam war going on Okay, but it tells us the following. I forget to put it here, but all these countries, all of them, all five of them grew faster than world average. Okay, when, so I don't know, for example, what's your name? Paran. Your grandparents, when they are born, which year? Your grandfather? 1950, maybe? How, how old is he? 60 years old? 50, your grandparents. So he was born in 1970. Okay, in 1970, Asia is the poorest place on earth. Okay, Asia on average is the poorest people. You want to find poor people, you don't go to Africa in 1970. You come to Asia, okay? All of Asia in the last uh, 40 years grew faster than uh, of, I mean, there are exceptions like Afghanistan, but most of Asia, definitely all of South Asia grew faster than the world average, okay? So now, uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia especially, is not the poorest place in the earth anymore. And this is a good thing, okay? Uh, but this is, uh, by the way, all these numbers are corrected for population, okay? What the economists call per capita. Capita in Latin means head. So, uh, per head, per person, okay? Uh, um, so, in English, in Americans call it capital punishment. What is capital punishment? What is capital punishment? Hanging is a capital punishment. You take off the head. Executions, yes. So, uh, Okay there, okay, there is some technical problems. So the next graphs I'm going to show you how much of this economic growth is going to reflect it to citizens, average person, okay? So uh, the next step we have want to look at is how equally this is distributed. You can have economic growth a lot and most of the benefits can go to the, the king or the president, okay? And this has happened many times. So uh, just that the total is growing a lot doesn't necessarily mean it's actually shared, okay? Uh, that's next thing we are going to look at it. And then 
once we see the big picture, we are going to start to dig a little bit uh, more. Um, okay, we'll start. So, what the pictures will show us, remember Turkey and Malaysia like interlinked. When we uh, look deeper, the average incomes of the people, we will see that uh, average Malaysian person income is higher than average the average person in Turkey, okay? Which is an indication that the total in Indonesia, excuse me, in Malaysia is distributed more equally compared to Turkey, okay? Uh, okay, they are about to prepare it. So, okay. So, okay, this was the previous one and uh, these are the same graphs, uh, but this is the, the one on the right is starts from 1990 and it shows you the growth rate, okay? And I wanted to look at the growth rate because since 1990, Vietnam started late. Re remember, they had a civil war for 20 years, but now after 1990, they are growing faster, okay? So the one, on the right, you see the Vietnam is the fastest growing. And in this graph, the bottom is the world. So as you can see, all of these countries, Vietnam, South Korea, Malaysia, Indonesia, Turkey, all of them are growing faster than the world, okay? Which means uh, they are, some of them, closing the distance with the world average, and some, like the South Korea, is overtaking the world average. So now the ranking changes. I know you cannot read, but the top is Vietnam, then South Korea, then Malaysia and Indonesia. The fourth one is Turkey, okay? So if you focus on 1990 to present, so your parents' lifetime, uh, Indonesia and Malaysia grew same uh, speed. But since 1990, Malaysia is already richer than Indonesia. Uh, the level of income is still higher in Malaysia. I think you already know this, but actually the rate of growth, the speed is, uh, of them is the same. Not every year, you see, for example, Indonesia was a little bit behind until the last couple of years, then closed the difference. And you can see that Turkey stops growing in 2017-18. You know, it's flat after 2017-18. Uh, we are going through an economic crisis right now. The inflation is 100%, but Turkey is not our topic today. Okay. Okay, and uh, so, when people study these issues very, very detailed, what they find out that the, at the very heart of this fast economic growth is uh, manufacturing-based, uh, production, okay? So instead of relying on natural resources, if a country, uh, all these countries, when they base their economic growth to manufacturing things, you know, cars, electronics, etc., and uh, everything, apparel, uh, in the long term, they uh, grow uh, better and faster, okay? So, uh, exports are also important if you are an export-oriented country because uh, exports is, in your domestic market, if you bribe the politicians, they protect your company. But in the, if, when you export outside the world, uh, you cannot buy the politician. So in order to sell your product in an export market, your prices should be reasonable, your quality should be good, okay? So exporting is actually, you know, uh, the Koreans, the Hyundai or Samsung, uh, we buy their products not because we like the person selling it, but price and quality is very good, so we buy them, okay? So if a country's companies are uh, successful exporters, it's an indication that 
their product is good enough quality and the price is uh, good, that the people, uh, rest of the world, are willingly giving their cash to the product. So, uh, being an export-oriented country is uh, good. So, and the third one is creating national companies who are exporters. Uh, FDI, I apologize, I forget, oh right, foreign direct investment. It means foreign direct investment. So, Toyota produces in Indonesia an exported product. This is still an export and it shows that the workers and the engineers in Indonesia, Indonesia is good enough that they can produce that good quality car. But design, where is the design made? When Toyota produces the car, where is the design? The, not really. The design is in mostly Japan. What about the financial decisions uh, or like marketing? Like they show the advertisement in Indonesia, but the marketing is probably again in the headquarters in Tokyo. Or same is with the Samsung. So uh, foreign direct investment is good, but creating the domestic companies who are internationally known brands is better. Okay, and this is where South Korea is different than Turkey and Malaysia. Okay, do you know any Turkish brands? Not really. But you know lots of Korean brands. You know, you know the Hyundai, the Samsung, LG, and also uh, BTS. It's a brand uh, and Korean. So. Uh, but, uh, so, among these three countries, when we compare uh, Turkey, uh, Malaysia, and Indonesia, what we find out when we look at exports? Indonesia and Malaysia export more than they import, which is good. And Turkey exports a lot compared to Indonesia, but imports even more, which is why we have the inflation problem right now. Okay. Uh, so, the, uh, among these three countries, Malaysia is both exports more than imports, and uh, they export a lot per person. So, their performance is better. Uh, Turkey and Indonesia is Turkey exports mostly manufacturing, which is good, but exports less than the imports, which is not good. And Indonesia exports more than imports, which is good but exports a lot of natural resources. Oil, coal, palm oil. So manufacturing exports is there, but not as much as Malaysia. So this is kind of the ranking of these three countries. Can we, as a next slide? Uh, so next one, this is the previous one. Uh, we are going back, like forward. The, yeah, okay. This is, we are going backward. Okay, can we go forward? Oh, which there is some. Um... Okay, this one. Okay. So this is what I meant. Uh, the. <coughs> so if we exclude the companies, which mean we exclude the very rich people, what is the level of uh, consumption per day? So, uh, again, the one at the very top is the Malaysia, and it is, I can't read, but like $25 per day, so, or even like close to $28. If you look at how much income and the average person, not the very rich, exclude the very rich, have in pocket every day. What we observe in Malaysia is the top, Turkey is the second, and Indonesia is here divided urban Indonesia, average Indonesia, and rural Indonesia. Okay, and this is no surprise to you, I am sure, urban Indonesians are richer than rural Indonesians. Okay, uh, but there is 
first of all, the good news, all of these countries, it is improving. So this is good news. In the last uh, 20 years, your life, your life is only improvement. So you think it is normal, not normal in human history. Okay. Uh, but as we say, as we can see, the Indonesia is still maybe the average person in the pocket every day five dollars around, and the, uh, Malaysia is really uh, doing better. And this is the difference. What I mean by the how the money is resource distributed. Remember, in the, when we look at the total, Turkey and Malaysia was like interlinked, as if the same. But when you focus on uh, what the average person is experiencing. Now, Indonesia is, uh, excuse me, Malaysia is definitely better than Turkey, which shows you within Turkey, distribution is more unequal because this graph excludes the companies, which means it excludes the rich. Okay. 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 We can go uh, one step further. And this is, so measuring poverty is very, People don't agree what is the what should be the poverty level line. You know, above the line you are considered not poor, below the line you are considered poor. So like one dollar above not poor, one dollar below uh, poor, which is not a very like all the difference between these two persons is like two dollars. But one of them is poor, one of them is not poor. So I present you two alternative poverty measurement. Uh, this time being poor is bad, so Malaysia is at the one the bottom. So being at the bottom is good, because it means less people poor. Okay, so the Turkey is above it, and you can see actually in the last couple of years poverty start to increase in Turkey. Okay, this happens when there is no economic growth and uh, high inflation, and uh, Malaysia is. However, you in the left one the poverty line is like three point. $85 or $65, I can't read. And the right one, it is $6.87, $85 a day, okay? Uh, depending on how you measure, the Indonesian poverty is either declining very fast or declining slowly, okay? So the difference between the two of the graph is the following. People are in Indonesia are uh, clustering around this $4 and $6.5, okay? Not very poor, but really not really doing extremely good either, okay? So, as I said, uh, <clears throat> but the interesting figure here is that in Indonesia and Turkey, economic growth was same, but the poverty is lower in Indonesia, which means again, more equally distributed. The fruits of economic growth is more equally distributed. Uh, okay, we can uh, go to the next slide, thank you. So, this is the second half of my talk. So, we'll, we'll, what we learned so far, we learned so far that the, uh, the, all of these countries are growing. This is good, and all of them are growing faster than the world average, okay? Faster than Africa, faster than Latin America. So, these are all good, and uh, uh, this graph, I will explain. Uh, the, now, the second part is some of the things with economic growth, you can buy more with your money if you have money in your pocket. We look at the distribution. Second thing we did was look at the distribution. Distribution tells you how much that economic growth goes to the people's pockets. Okay? And uh, as I said, money can buy a lot of things food, etc., clothing, electronics, cars. But some things like pavements, you cannot buy it. The government has to provide it. So the second part, we are going to focus on how much government is actually uh, spending for average person. Not for the army, but the average everyday life. Okay, so the first thing you, we can stay here. The first thing you look at it, the first is how much the government resources are. Okay, and in the X axis is how much the uh, total tax revenue as a percentage of gross domestic product. So the, of the total economic pie produced, what is the percentage government collects as a tax? And here is it's an interesting uh, fact. Uh, generally, when the countries get richer, they can collect more tax because 
it's basically everybody's income is registered. It is easier to collect taxes, okay? And the uh, more you shop with the credit card, government knows how much money you have. So uh, in the developed countries, there are very little uh, street vendors, no. So everything is registered, easier to tax. So it's normal that the richest countries, South Korea, tax more. Uh, but interesting is Vietnam is actually poorer than Malaysia and Indonesia, but they collect more taxes, okay? So the tax revenue total shows you the total capacity of government, how much they can do. Whether they are going to do it, it's an, another question. But the tax revenue tells you the potential the government can do for the people. So we identify uh, immediately that the Indonesia and Malaysia uh, choose to collect less taxes. Okay. Uh, one reason is because these both countries have petrol and the petrol is extracted by the national company, uh, they have other revenues, okay? In Turkey, Vietnam, and South Korea, if the government wants to spend, they have to tax. There is no petrol or nature of that. Okay, we can go to the next slide, thank you. Uh, so we, we already covered this one, we covered this one. Okay, this one is similar measure but instead of looking at one point in time, it shows you over the years. Uh, it's a little bit, this is excluding the municipalities, the central government, okay? And it tells us a similar picture is that the Malaysia and Indonesia collect too little tax, in my opinion, okay? And, uh, how much they spend, excuse me, how much they spend. Turkey spends more than it collects because by borrowing a lot, okay? This is another second problem of Turkish economy. So the Turkish spending level is unhealthy level of high. Other extreme, okay? We can continue, uh, Professor, sorry. Okay, so a summary. Asian countries strength, economic, economy has the capacity, okay? It grew fast, it's healthy, okay? But uh, what is maybe less, uh, or needs improvement is the social spending. Asian countries are uh, not spending, especially on helping families. Okay, this becomes problem when you have a crisis like COVID. Because COVID is, means that the government in 2020, remember, announced lockdown. Lockdown means for most business, like restaurants, hotels, you cannot work. You have to shut down the uh, company. One week ago, you have a healthy business, customers, you make profit. Next week, everything closed. Okay. Previous week, you were a uh, cook, employed, you provide for your family, next week you are, you have no job, okay? And uh, this is really what uh, becomes a problem because in Asian countries, your only alternative is then if your family can help you, okay? But the problem is if your family also works in the tourism business, all of them together lose their job or in the restaurant business. So suddenly this economic model of Asian countries, you know, work hard and provide for your family didn't work, okay? But now COVID is over, you may think that, okay, we solved this, that is in the past. Uh, there is a long-term problem all over in Asia and it is a declining fertility. What is fertility? Yes, babies per woman, okay. So for a country, if the babies per woman on average is more than two, population is increasing, okay? You understand that the men cannot have babies. So if every woman has only one baby, the population will start to decline next generation, okay? So for the population to stay constant, 
two to two point one babies per woman average should be okay. Let's say two. Uh, and all over East Asia, the long-term problem is because the governments cannot are not helping the families. Uh, most women now in Japan, South Korea, how many babies they have on average? Anybody knows? Yes, let's say one. Okay, so Japan, the population is already declining. Korea will start soon, probably. China will follow, and Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore. All of them have this uh, problem. What do you think the case is in Indonesia? How many brothers and sisters you have? So, is there any single child in this room? Any single child? Raise your hand. Single child. One. We have one single child. Two. How many? Two. Two. One brother or sister. I am. I am two. I have a brother. We are two. Okay. Three. Including yourself. Count yourself. Okay. Three. Okay. Four. Four. This is four. What about five? We still have five, one person. Anybody above five? Wow, how many? Six, okay, we have one person, six, okay. Okay, uh, so I'm going to show you that uh, the average in Indonesia is now down to, uh, make a guess, what is the current generation average for Indonesia? Decreasing, but decreasing to what? How many children do you have? Let me ask to the woman here, young woman. How many children do you plan to have? So, for example, more than my mother. Who says more than my mother? Okay. How many? Uh, you want six? Okay. One person? Okay. We will see that she is not going to do it. Okay. How many of you do you want two, for example? Two? Two? Yeah, two maybe. So you also want more than your mother. You are the single child. So you also want more than your mom. Yes, okay. Uh, the average, according to the uh, national statistics, uh, in Indonesia is 2.4 right now. It's already 2.4. And I'm going, to sh I'm going to make the following argument in the remaining 15 uh, minutes is that most of you will have less children than you desire. Okay? And I'm going to explain you why is it happening. And I'm going to show you the data that it is happening all over the world. It's nothing about Indonesia specific. Okay. Uh, maybe, Professor, maybe I, if I take it. Okay, I understand. I okay. Let's skip this. Okay, this is not really easy. I now understand what you suffered through. My apologies. Okay. Okay. So, all over the world, there are three trends that causing fertility, babies per woman to decline. Number one is urbanization, okay? It's more expensive to raise a children in the city. Anybody here born in a village? Anybody here born in a village? Did you grow up in a village? Until when? No, three is not. Did you work on the farm? Any of you work on the farm? Work on the farm, okay. I was born in a village and I didn't work on the farm either, okay? Uh, if the children help the family on the farm, the cost of children to the family is cheaper because as a children, you are a consumer in the household. You take money from your parents, but if you are on a farm and you help the parents, you know, 
uh, you pick the eggs or like uh, take care of the chicken, things like that. Even if it is small, you are helping the family. So when the families move to the urban areas, children becomes more expensive because the children don't work, they go to school. School itself costs money to the family. So if something is expensive, what do people do? Buy more or less? Less, yeah. So for families, uh, children is an expense. If it is more expensive, as you can see, so in the, the size of the bubble shows you the population. I am showing you here two Western Asian countries, Turkey and Iran, and one South Korea, and then the, uh, Indonesia is the red, okay? Because the most populous one. On the vertical axis, you can see uh, the number of babies per woman, and the uh, x-axis, the horizontal, is the rate of urbanization. Korea is the most urban now, 80%, and number of babies per woman is down to one. Look at Iran and Turkey. It's already below two. Yes. You think Islam is different. Islamic countries have women have more, Muslim ladies have more babies. Wrong. Okay. And as you can see, Indonesia is already down to close to two. Okay. So decline number one reason urbanization children is more expensive okay the next one is uh, should be education let's uh, education so this is it shows you the x-axis the horizontal shows you how many years in school in the 15 to 44 years old. So biologically, 15 to 44 is the limit that you can have babies, okay? So people, women, of course, is we are looking at women because they can have babies only, so ignore the men. Uh, okay, so what we learn, the more, again, South Korea, I apologize for the colors, but the South Korea is the more educated, and as you can see, much less babies. The first year data available is 1970, okay? And what we see, more educated, less babies. Why? One, in Asia, people rarely have babies before marriage, okay? Uh, sex and babies before marriage is a uh, big no-no, so, if you, people, and also in Asia, people get married most of the time after they graduate. So if you stay longer in the school, you graduate later, you get married later, biologically you have less time to marry, okay? It's very mechanical, very relationship. But there is a second reason, more important. You are more educated. Uh, now, as a woman, you can also earn more money. Remember, now everybody is also living in an urban area, and if you get educated, actually, now you can have earn more money, okay? In a rural area farm, whether you are not educated or not, it is not going to depend how many bananas you can pick a day. But in a city, if you are more educated, now you can earn more money. So if you have more babies, uh, you work less, you earn less money. So this is another reason why babies are expensive in cities, uh, because mother's lost earnings are higher, okay? Do we understand this concept, lost earning? You cannot work if you have young children, very small children, babies, and because you are more educated, every year you are not working, you are losing money, okay? So again, children is more expensive. If something is more expensive, people buy less of it, okay? So all of the Asia, same story, okay? Uh, and the last, uh, okay, this is urbanization, maybe. Okay, the, that, that one, the, we can go back. Uh, not this one, this one, okay. This is the least known reason, but it's very important. The one reason people have seven children in your grandparents' generation is because unfortunately they expected two of them to die before the age of five. They didn't know the statistics, they are not educated, but life experience 
show them that if you start with two children in 1950s, it's very likely that you have no children grown up. Okay, uh, talk to your grandparents. Generally, they don't mention it, but if you really uh, push them, they will tell you that they, they have brothers or sisters died very young, okay? And uh, currently, so this is like, out of uh, five children, one died before the age of five in 1970, in all over Asia, but right now it is like one out of 100. So, next generation learns, okay? Your grandparents expected some children to die, so they started with seven, Suddenly, um, uh, medicine improved. This all seven survived. So next generation, they learn. I don't need to start with seven children if I want five. If I want five, I can have five babies. You know? Uh, so it's a bit like, but this is again, in South Korea, three children out of 1,000 die only. This is a very good news. Okay, babies not dying is a good thing. Okay, I guess so. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay, so we can continue. So, these three things reduces the fertility. Urbanization, female education, decline in child mortality. All of them are good things. We want more of it. But at the same time, the, if the fertility declines even lower than two, the population will start to reduce uh, in the future. So, can we find a solution that keep these three things in our pocket so we don't lose them, but we can also stabilize the population at the level of two per woman, babies, okay? Some countries find the solution. Let me show you the solution, okay. We can go to the uh, next slide, maybe. So, this is Three countries from Europe, three neighbors. Uh, France is blue, Italy is red, and the yellow is Spain. Remember, remember what I said? Uh, Islam doesn't matter, so to the Christianity. All these countries, look at them, they were similar until 1970. Three neighboring countries, all of them Catholic Christian. They have similar number of babies uh, between 1940 and 1980. So something happened in 1980 and France changed. What happened in 1980, okay? It's not the aliens. No, uh, no, it's not the coronavirus. They changed the public policy. Remember how we started at the very beginning, what the government can, is doing for us, the pavements. What is the, in, they introduced a new public policy. Uh, remember the reason for decline in fertility. Children for educated mother in urban areas are expensive. So what is the solution? Public policy, make children cheaper. Free nursery, free childcare, okay? Do you understand? The, so the logic is, what the can government do to us is to increase the welfare. Remember, people actually want to have children. They don't want just one or zero. They want average. If you ask people, they tell you on average two. And we can see the statistics, France. Everybody thinks that the French women are very free-spirited. They don't want to marry. They don't want to settle. Then we look at the statistics and what we see, they have more children than Italians or Spanish. Okay. Uh, so, my conclusion is growth is good, economic growth. It gives us the resources to achieve uh, what we want in our lives. How we distribute it matters. Uh, and uh, all these three countries I focus today, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Turkey, they, they have very little support to families, okay? I can share my slides, uh, I don't mind. Uh, in Malaysia and Indonesia, they, both countries tax too little. The government has not many resources. These countries are rich enough to tax 
the citizens more. Okay, Turkey tax a lot comparatively, but Turkey spends a lot on pensions, retirement benefits, and too little on families. Okay, so different countries, different political issues, but all of them spends too little to support the families, and all these countries are uh, have very rapidly declining birth rates. Last year, average. Uh, babies per woman in Turkey was lower than France. Okay? So religion is not going to solve the problems for you. Uh, these problems are universal. Their reasons, the decline in fertility is three good things, remember. These three things that happened and caused the decline in fertility, we don't want less of it. But at the same time, it creates another problem, and we want to try to solve that problem. Okay, that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much for inviting me again. It was a pleasure to be here. Okay, a very interesting explanations, even though for me as a, a political person, <laughs> which yeah. mostly we conducted our research uh, for the qualitative one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, quite hard <laughs> to uh, fully understand I mean, how to see uh, those numbers. But I think since the participants also are coming from the economic departments, because mm -hmm. the students are very diverse. Okay. Yeah, even also... Some engineers you, maybe? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's an engineer. From okay. engineering? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, now we come to the second sessions of our class. If suppose, for example, any questions or anything which you like to discuss because uh, Prof. Hassan has divided yeah, two sessions. The last one was about the academic, how I mean, the economic should be arranged. That it is not only about the growth of the economic, but we also need to think about how to distribute the economic so the gap between the rich and the poor also can be solved. And the first one, before that, he told us also some of his experience, yeah? about it, uh, uh, interacting with the people coming from various big grounds. Okay, please, any questions from, okay, uh, come close with the mix and introduce yourself, yeah, names and departments. Check. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. And my name is Muhammad Renaldi from uh, International Relation. And my question is, in, 2020, Turkey was successful of overcoming the economic because of uh, coronavirus, and it it was increasing around seven or seven point six percent. It was really nice, I guess. But my question is, in this time on June 2022, Turkey got inflation, and it means. It is the worst inflation since 1998. So, and my question is, what is the reason and what is the main, what are the main course, uh, causes? Thank you very much. Okay, should we collect some uh, questions or answer each one one by one? Okay, first of all, before maybe how many other would like to ask the question from this side? Raise your hand. Okay, maybe okay. I answer this. You, you answer first. This uh, gives you an, uh, time to think the questions. Okay, so uh, the uh, Turkey is in an economic crisis since 2018. In 2018, we had a, a devaluation, kind of depreciation uh, in the Turkish lira. The reason for that uh, is. Uh, the Turkey's chronic problem, which is importing more than exporting, okay? How you can import more than export every year? By borrowing from abroad. So if you borrow a lot, eventually, other countries became suspicious that you are not going to pay back everything, and they start to ask more interest. Uh, again, what happened in 2018 is a shock. In 2019, the uh, government tried to re-stimulate the economy and when the pandemic hit, all of the resources were already used, okay? So pandemic shock, the government couldn't do much in Turkey. Actually, compared to size, uh, the Indonesian government uh, do more to help 
the families, actually, uh, in 2020. And then Turkey tried to grow faster, uh, not by spending money, but by giving credits. Okay, and that the solution in 2020 by giving credits to uh, companies created the current inflation. So this is the problem, classic problem of short-term thinking. In 2018, to solve the problem quickly, you choose like uh, as if, if it's a sports person, you take steroids, okay, short-term solution. And in 2020, because you already uh, uh, used your steroids, you used doping, and in 2021, then 22 crash. Okay. Uh, President Erdogan has been in power in 20 years now, and uh, in order, he wants to win the next election too. So in or, instead of solving the deep problems, he goes for short-term solutions. This is uh, his uh, problem, and it created this uh, record inflation uh, as, uh, 20, after 20 years, unfortunately. Uh, yes, that's my reason. Okay, explanation. Okay. Any questions? Okay, please, if you have any other questions. You can ask me about uh, experiences in living abroad also. No. Uh, yeah, including also maybe about if they would like to continue the study in Turkey, right? Yeah. Because yeah, please. Everything is clear? Okay. Yeah, I think uh, Prop Hassan, yeah, uh, really thank you for your coming. Thank you again sharing. for inviting me. Yeah, and hopefully that this is, yeah. This is not only your first time okay, yeah, coming yes. to Indonesia, especially to our campus. Okay. Hopefully that by next year, you also will come back again here, right? I hope so, yeah. Yeah, because you know that uh, Prof. Hassan coming here last night, right? And tomorrow, just because he wants to meet you, right? <laughs> exactly. He will leave. I said that, <laughs> yeah, for next year, it will be much better if you stay longer times. Yeah, uh, hopefully, Malang. yes, we, yeah. I can stay longer. Okay, thank you very much, uh, everybody. and. Uh, there will be no other class ya yeah, for today. Jadi untuk hari ini kita selesai sampai di sini. Ya yeah, dan uh, we still have one more meeting by next week, right? And uh, again, we give applause to Prof Hasan. Ya. Yeah. Bye everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much Prof Hasan. Yeah, Terima kasih sekalian. Kita cukupkan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah wabarakatuh. Uh, maybe some students would like to take a picture with you in yeah, here, yeah, yeah. but I think that should be arranged. Yeah, maybe around 10 to 15 only. Here. Yeah, I met your service. If you have individual questions, also you can ask. Okay, yeah, don't yeah. be shy. Okay, siapa yang mau ambil foto bisa maju ke depan.